I was 25, living in a little apartment in San Francisco, running a bookkeeping business, just moving along in life, getting by. Then I got pregnant. When I was ready to go back to work, of course I needed someone to take care of Xavier. When I found out the least expensive option was 900 a month, all I could do was cry. We were living on about 500 a month in Oakland, which was being hit hard by gentrification. I had no transportation and I could barely pay for diapers. Why was I in this crisis just because I decided to have a baby and wasn't rich? The provider explained how I could get a childcare subsidy. She told me exactly where to go, who to talk to, how to get through the systems. I got the subsidy and worked my way from a part-time to a full-time job as an accountant. Then there were state budget cuts. Some of the rules on funding for childcare changed, and suddenly I was making too much money. I'd have to pay $1,200 a month. I was already paying a third of the childcare costs, but without the subsidy and after my rent, I'd only have about $50 a month for the rest of our living expenses. For food, baby stuff, transportation, impossible. When I asked my employer if I could work fewer hours again to keep the subsidy, she turned it around on me, played into old stereotypes about low-income black women, and accused me of trying to game the system. So just like that, I lost everything. My job, my son's preschool where he was happy and learning, and my mind. Childcare is like air. It's not something you know you need until it's cut off. I learned that there were 5,000 women in Oakland alone, mostly African American, who are on waiting lists for childcare. I sat with hundreds of them while our kids played, listening to their stories of being shamed and blamed for needing help. At the state level, I'm involved in a campaign to update and raise the income eligibility for child care. And we're doing organizing to increase subsidies for homeless families. We decided to stop waiting and start getting noticed. We're talking about how low-income women of color are disproportionately locked out of child care opportunities and how our children suffer because of it. Choosing to become a mother shouldn't mean choosing isolation or poverty.